美国众议长佩洛西亚洲行可能访问台湾。中共二十九日起，在东海、南海、临近台海的平潭等海域展开五场军事演习恫吓，扬言出动多型军机绕飞台湾。台湾军方掌握并应变。美军雷根号航空母舰打击群三十日正开向台湾东方的菲律宾海。此外，美方十多架军机，包括六架空中加油机，三十日增加进驻到临近台湾的美军冲绳基地，被解读为护航佩洛西做好准备。这这五个军演，现在看起来，第一个对台湾不会造成实质上的危险，那第二对佩洛西的这个专机飞行路线来看，那更不会造成这个威胁了。如果是觉得说中国只是在故作姿态，因为对习近平来讲，北戴河跟年底的二十大毕竟太重要哈，所以他必须要有一些反应。裴洛西二十九日出访前后，雷根号航母打击群发布在南海起降战斗机的照片，传出两艘共军舰艇紧跟雷根号，最近距离不到三十公里。中共党媒《英文环球时报》称，中共央视三十一号首度发布疑似东风十七极音速飞弹在公路的试射画面，号称航母杀手。东风时期目前只有对地攻击版本，对美国海军暂时构不成什么威胁。它的速度应该在五马赫左右。它的技术，美国和俄罗斯也已经具备了。而在很多中文媒体眼中啊，这个东风导弹已经被严重神化了，大大的夸大了他们的性能。裴洛西八月一日疑似已经抵达新加坡。目前传出可能访问台湾的三种版本，包括二至三日从马来西亚飞往台湾，或者四日从临近台湾的菲律宾起飞。我是认为说，依照裴洛西他的性格也好，所以还是说他的从政的经历来讲，是不会受到中国威胁而改变主意的。新唐亚太电视林玉堂、张东旭，台湾台北报道。我命令全军指战员要坚决贯彻党中央和中央军委决策指示，发扬一不怕苦、二不怕死的战斗精神，牢牢掌握能打仗、打胜仗的过硬本领，锻造招之即来、来之能战、战之必胜的精兵劲旅。安不可忘危，志不可忘乱。我们捍卫和平、维护安全、设置战争的手段和前途，多种多样。但军事手段始终是保底手段。人民军队永远是战斗队，人民军队的生命力在于战斗力。必须强化忧患意识，坚持底线思维。全部心思向打仗聚焦，各项工作向打仗用尽，确保在党和人民需要的时候，拉得出、上得去、打得赢。要坚持仗怎么打，兵就怎么练。打仗需要什么，就苦练什么。什么问题突出，就解决什么问题。到了。江南战斗集团，我坚信，我们的英雄军队有信心、有能力打败一切来犯之敌。我们的英雄军队有信心、有能力。维护国家主权、安全、发展利益，我们的英雄军队有信心、有能力谱写强军事业新篇章。
It is reported that some bank ATMs in Shanghai restricted deposit and withdrawal services. The ATMs of many banks in Shanghai, China, have recently limited ATM functions to deposit only or withdrawal only. The reason given is that it's for the sake of the COVID-19 pandemic prevention. In addition to measures such as interviews, the People's Bank of China headquarters in Shanghai was about to investigate the ATM's operation thoroughly. According to Chinese media Daily Economic News, there were three ATMs available for use at an ATM branch of China Merchants Bank. However, notices saying deposits only are stuck outside the door of two of the three ATMs. The other one had a notice saying withdrawals only. In this regard, the bank also attached an explanation below these papers saying it was to implement the requirements for cash disinfection. The same situation is observed in some ATM branches of Shanghai Pudong Development Bank and Industrial Bank. Notices with the words deposits only or withdrawals only were also seen outside doors of these ATMs. According to the reporter, one of the ATM screens displays that the machine does not support the withdrawal function. If you need to withdraw money, please go to the other ATMs or the bank counter for processing. In response, the staff of the above-mentioned bank explained that the cash needed to be disinfected during the epidemic. The bank staff said to the reporter that they entrust a third-party firm to come twice a week to disinfect the deposited money and then return it back and put it in the ATM after disinfection. Additionally, the bank said the twice-weekly cash disinfection schedule has little impact on citizens' everyday deposits and withdrawals. On July 17th, a citizen named Tian from Baoshan District told Media News QQ that she failed to withdraw money at an ATM of Agricultural Bank of China, Baoshan, Yupu. The paper outside the ATM read, Maintenance, please wait. Then she had to get a number and queue under the sun to enter the bank to withdraw cash. Many Shanghai residents are also experiencing the same distress in Tian. Last month since the lockdown was lifted, banks in Shanghai have faced a peak demand for cash. A video circulating online shows a man outside the Shanghai CITIC bank. The video owner said that people couldn't use ATMs to deposit money because the bank stated the money was infected. He sighed and blamed the bank for such an issue. Failing to withdraw money at the ATM, they tried it another way, go straight to the bank. However, some Shanghai netizens complain that it takes an hour to wait in a queue in front of the bank. In addition, a bank allows only six people to enter at a time. Xi明主席同拜登总统通电话时强调,中国政府和中国人民在台湾问题上的立场。是一以贯之的，坚决维护中国国家主权和领土完整，是十四亿多中国人民的坚定意志。民意不可违，玩火必自焚。相信美方已经充分了解中方传递的强烈、清晰信息。佩洛西中议长如果复台，将是。对中国内政的粗暴干涉，严重损害中国主权和领土完整，肆意践踏一个中国原则，严重威胁台海和平稳定，严重破坏中美关系，导致非常严重的事态和后果。我们要再次正告美方。中方正严阵以待，中国人民解放军绝不会坐视不管。中方必将采取坚决应对和有力反制措施，捍卫自身主权和领土完整。美方应该做的是恪守一个中国原则。Caixin reported on July 30th that on December 24th, 2021, under the executive order issued by the Supreme Court, the Zhengzhou Intermediate Court successfully executed Cheng Zhenggong for being guilty of rape.
The Sanmansha Intermediate Court found Chong Jung Gong guilty of rape, sentenced him to death, and deprived him of political rights for life. The incident happened at Sanmansha Middle School in 1987. The former 86-year-old school teacher, Luo Shui Chung, recalled, The principal asked me to report the case, so I called the Public Security Bureau. He said, at that time, many people successfully protected Zhang. After I reported the case, a section chief in the Civil Affairs Bureau, who had a good relationship with me, interceded. Still, I disagreed and we didn't have any contact after that. He was born in 1957 in Henan and belonged to the first group of people who got rich in the 1980s and was a millionaire before he was 30. He is the actual controller of Zhengzhou Yuancheng Cultural Industry Co. Limited. He started his business in the hydraulic machinery repair industry and then as malleable steel plant director. From July 1987, Zheng Chenggong was detained until January 1997. From his disappearance on medical parole to his arrest in November 2011 and his release in May 2015, Zheng Chenggong served only 13 years in prison, including one to two years of medical parole. An insider told Tsai Xin, when accompanying him inside, the insider learned that the materials for his medical parole and commutation were all fake. They were all made by the prison guards and related personnel with money. Eleven years after disappearing, Zheng Chenggong became the chairman of the Hunan Chamber of Commerce, Hunan Province, with the new name Chen Meizhong. An insider said that Zheng Chenggong's incarnation of Chen Meizhong's household registration information was all false. After he escaped on parole for medical treatment, he bribed the police in Yanling to create a new fake household registration information called Chen Meizhong and moved to Changsha. Especially the criminal ruling of releasing him on March 20, 2015, wasn't released on the China Judgment Documents Network until August 9, 2021, after more than six years. From the first incident in 1987 to the execution in December 2021, Zhang Chenggong's bizarre 30-year journey back from the dead and back to justice has greater significance in uncovering a series of favoritism and corruption in the political and legal systems of public officials. The cover of the fraudulent power money deal According to Taishin's investigation, some Hunan officials and the director of the Municipal Public Security Bureau, Li Junxin, are more or less related to Zhang Chenggong's case.